you're always partial to the tour that you're on, but I would say uh, this is the best tour that the band has ever done. So we're enormously happy about it. What's up guys, Matthew Scar here at the Roundhouse in Camden Town, London with Olaf of Amaranth. Yes. And also of Dragonland. Exactly. But you were also in Night Range. Uh, it's actually, yeah, Night Range. A lot of people confuse it with uh, Night Range. Okay. <laughs> it sounds almost the same. And you provided a few solo with, with guitar solos with Disarmonia Mundi band. From Italy. So you like to stay busy, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was a while ago though, but um, yeah. great band. Um, so how was this tour? What do you think about it? It's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, most of the, as we posted on our site, most of the, um, the shows have been uh, sold out. I would say 70% of the shows. And the really good venues, amazing fans, new songs, quite a cool yeah, new stage yeah. uh, setup and everything. So it's been, you're always partial to the tour that you're on, but I would say uh, this is the best tour that the band has ever done. So we're enormously happy about it. What do you think is the, your favorite part of this set list? What's your favorite song to play live at the moment? Actually, there's this uh, moment in a song called Amaranthine, mm -hmm. and um, we uh, take things down a little bit and we play the intro on piano. Uh, together with uh, Elise, our singer, who uh, sings it together with the piano. So it's not really so much about me switching to the piano and doing my ego thing. It's more about hearing Elise interpreting it different every night. Because when you play the songs like in the same tempo that they are on the album, so people recognize them, you will have uh, done that about a thousand times before. Mm -hmm. But when we play this Amaranthine on the piano every night, it's completely different. Since it's very alive. So it feels like refreshing and... Yeah, it has that kind of magical vibe to it. What would you say was the biggest challenge in writing the newest record, Catalyst? I think the biggest challenge was um, to uh, two things. To put limits on your... Um, I won't say on the creativity, but put some boundaries on the direction of the album. Because mm -hmm. it's very easy to, uh, to add a lot of things that are, don't necessarily belong in Amaranth. And we wanted this for this album to be really creative and really open-minded. But we also didn't want to uh, push it too far. So, uh, and secondly, we also had, uh, we had so many ideas for this album. <laughs> so we had this long list of songs, and before we went into the studio we had to uh, select the best ones so the the selection took a, a, a bit of of time in terms of what we leave out or what we would keep in yeah exactly and not only the time that it takes but it's also the fact that you know that these songs that don't go on the album they're not going to be on a future album either and there are some really great ideas there but when you start to work on a new album you want to uh, begin from scratch okay because you've changed as a person and you've changed as a composer and a creative mind so so these songs you don't you don't think they're gonna can re be revisit some, somehow and most likely not well, so there is a vault with you know millions of ideas and uh, okay. songs and who knows maybe well, in the future, it's always better to have too many ideas than not enough so this is the way. <laughs> Can you describe each member of the band with one word? Definitely. I would say, um, let's start with uh, Morton, buff. <laughs> Joan, bass player, funny. Uh, let's say with uh, Michael, multi-talented. That counts as one word with the dash. <laughs> and uh, Nils. What should I say with the Nils? Uh, a cinephile. Cinephile, okay. And uh, Elise would be multi layered. Multi layered, okay. And who was your very first guitar hero growing up? Actually, uh, when I was six or seven, one of the main reasons that I started to play guitar was uh, because of uh, Metallica. Mm -hmm. That's also how I got into metal in the first place. So then it was a natural thing that um, I got really into uh, Kirk Hammett as well. And I know a lot of people have opinions about him as a guitar player, but I feel like the solos that he composed, you know, on the first four albums specifically, were really fitting to the songs. So, um, but I guess the first real guitar here was Ingrid Malmsteen. 
okay. from Sweden, also mm -hmm. like me. And according to my humble self, my humble opinion, uh, one of the best guitar players in the world who has ever lived. What's the weirdest source of inspiration you came across so far? Good question. I would say for the very first um, uh, show that we did abroad, outside of Sweden, mm -hmm. was uh, right after the revolution in uh, Tunisia. Okay. So uh, this was back in 2011 and these people had never heard metal, ever. And uh, there was this uh, day off that we had in a small little Arabic quarter next to the, um, to the Mediterranean. And uh, there was just something about the vibe there that really inspired me. Uh, this, it became a part of a song called The Nexus. Okay. Because I was hearing some Arabic notes. I don't think I've ever told anyone this before, but so that I, there was something like good. that melody that uh, stuck in my head because it was a, such a different uh, experience. So um, I'm not sure if I would call it weird, but uh, let's say out of the, uh, you, out of the you usual. You don't expect to no, exactly. or something like that. Okay. Um, what's the, what do you think is the biggest issue in the music industry at the moment? Uh, good question. I mean, I know a lot of people, um, uh, they complain about streaming and not paying enough. And I agree with that to a certain extent, but I think the model is really good. And it has given a lot of bands the opportunity to make a living from music or at least release an album and get out there. But I would still say that uh, it needs to pay better. Because I think it's really important for people to understand that there is, uh, you know, real value in music, and now they get it almost for free. So I think uh, I think it's a good thing that people have access to music, but uh, you know, to kind of any music that they want to listen to. But that shouldn't be uh, that shouldn't come out of the artist's pockets yeah. because we are a very fortunate band with uh, you know many millions of uh, streams every week but a lot of bands are not so fortunate and it means that they cannot make a living so um, so I would say like many others I would say that's the maybe the main issue even if we are not as affected as others yeah to me also not, I wouldn't say it's a problem but as a fan uh, there's, oh, there's always like there's too much music so sometimes you don't come across some bands for years and then you discover them like, oh my God, they've been around for 10 years, but first time hearing them. And so I, I was kind of happy, but frustrated at the same time, because there's uh, just, just so much, everyone you know, can recall themselves and release music nowadays. But yeah, it's, just so, it's, it's, it's a really great it's thing. But so yeah. much music, you know, but. Exactly, it's a really great thing for the musicians to get heard, but at the same time, it is confu confusing to the consumer. So this is what you get when you get of very many voices. Same thing goes for you know voices on the internet in yeah. general. Everyone can have a common Everything opinion a and a comment. One click away. Exactly, and the last thing that you want to do is silence people, obviously. Because the way that it used to be, let's say in the 90s, was that very few people got heard as artists and musicians. Very few people on the street got heard with their, let's say, political opinions. It is much better the way that it is now. It's just that people are not used to it. It's uh, the first time in human history that any, anyone can say anything at any time. Almost yeah. anyone. There are some uh, countries that are accepted to this rule, of yeah. course, but... That's, that's very true. Okay. Um, favorite non-metal bands? Oh, let's see, um, let's see how deep I can go with this, man. <laughs> so, obviously, we have uh, a lot of non-metal influences in uh, Amaranth's music, I would say. One of the absolute first and biggest influences that both me and Elise, um, uh, singer and fellow songwriter, had was um, Destiny's Child, Beyoncé. Okay. So it's very rhythmical, it's really powerful, and uh, it was a natural fit to combine with really, really heavy music. A lot of people don't realize this, but uh, we're a pop metal band, sue us. <laughs> Try it. No, but there's a lot of metalheads that I speak with that they get inspiration from different genres of like pop, like, uh, you know, for the, especially for the melodies of their very heavy songs. Exactly. So. so I agree entirely. So uh, let's do a few quick ones. So Roxette, ABBA, E-Type, certainly. Uh, so even some NSYNC, that's good music, it's powerful. And uh, let's stop there before I go to the completely <laughs> out of line. <laughs> what would you do if you were not a musician? 
I was just about to uh, get into law school when uh, we signed our first uh, record contract. So this, you know, my on my mom's side, uh, almost everyone has been educated to be a lawyer. So I was kind of heading towards that path. I wasn't too excited about it, and uh, like. Signing our first record deal and going to Japan completely changed my mind. And I said, you know, to my parents, I want to be a musician. And surprisingly enough, they were very supportive, which is weird, you know, when you change from something that is highly regarded to something that sounds like a really stupid idea. <laughs> so that was nice to, um, yeah. to be supportive. But um, I guess that's the path I probably would have had it done. Uh, yeah, and music was much more cooler and fun. <laughs> Ten times more cooler, man. <laughs> Nothing wrong with being a lawyer. Uh, do you have any useless talent? Yeah, quite, quite a few actually. <laughs> so um, my bandmates say that I, uh, I am a source of uh, an incredible amount of useless uh, information. So one of my hobbies is to just read random Wikipedia articles. Okay. It can be about the, um, let's say, uh, post-classicist revival architecture in the city of Prague. It can also be about the um, eating habits of a certain uh, Roman senator from 40 BC. I, I kid you not. And this is the stuff that I like to quote because... Uh, so you just uh, walk into the room of your band's and you're like, fun facts! Of today. <laughs> I'm like, that facade, I think it's from 1856, and they're like, yeah, nobody cares, man. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to add, man? Uh, no, just I'm uh, happy to, um, like, if anybody's watching who came out to the tour, thank you so much. And uh, anybody who's streaming our music, thank you for that as well. Thank you very much for your time, man. And thank you for your time. Yeah.